Zero. That's how many pitches in the big leagues Yoshinobu Yamamoto had thrown when the Dodgers gave him a guaranteed 12-year, $325 million contract. Oh, and they also paid a posting fee of more than $50 million just to sign him, without any MLB experience. The Dodgers gave Yamamoto the largest contract ever given to a pitcher, topping the previous record set by Garrett Cole of the Yankees. Even after they already pledged $700 million to fellow Japanese superstar Shohei Atani, they were compelled to promise another $325 to Yamamoto. And when all is said and done, Otani and Yamamoto will have received nearly $1 billion in salary from the Dodgers. Just think about that number for a second. Seems pretty crazy, right? Even with the Dodgers' deep pockets, it's not hard to view the venture as a huge risk. But it does seem like less of a risk when you know the scary truth about Yamamoto, which is that Yamamoto is just simply different. Different in what way, you might ask? Well, he's not the same type of two-way sensation that Otani is. I mean, the world may only have one Otani in it, but as a pitcher, Yamamoto is different in almost every conceivable way. Of course, for him, being different is exactly what makes him so special and why he's about to take the big leagues by storm. Now, your average baseball fan might not understand that Yamamoto isn't just another pitcher to make the move from Japan to the big leagues, but he might be the best pitcher to ever come out of Japan, which is high praise when you think about what pitchers like Hideo Nomo, Yu Darvish, and Masahiro Tanaka and others have accomplished. But on top of being Japan's best pitcher of all time, Yamamoto has a chance to be the best MLB pitcher of the next 10 years. And we don't say that lightly. It's not as far-fetched as you might think. We say it because what makes Yamamoto different is also what makes him great. And it's why he has a chance to be great in the big leagues. And if you learn more about him, you'll start to see why his upside is so high and why the Dodgers gave him a record-setting contract. For starters, and we can't stress this enough, Yamamoto isn't just another pitcher who was good in Japan and thinks he can make it in the majors. His resume says that he might be the best pitcher to ever come out of Japan. Yamamoto made his pro debut in the MPB in 2017, just three days after he turned 19. And even if we concede that the Japanese league is on par with, say, AA or AAA in the U.S., that in itself is impressive. There are not many teenagers playing in the upper levels of the minor leagues in the U.S., and those that do are pretty special. It took until just his second season for Yamamoto to become an MPB All-Star for the first time. From there, he continued to improve until he was the league's most dominant pitcher. And we mean dominant. Between 2021 and 2023, Yamamoto won the E.G. Sawamura Award in three straight seasons. And for those who don't know, that's Japan's equivalent of the Cy Young Award. And not only was he the best pitcher in Japan during those three seasons, but he also earned Pacific League MVP in all three of those seasons. In fact, Yamamoto won the Japanese Triple Crown in all three of those seasons as well. In other words, for three seasons in a row, Yamamoto was absolutely head and shoulders above the rest of the pitchers in Japan. His numbers during those years are like something out of a video game. In 2021, he went 18 and 5 with a 1.39 ERA. In 2022, he was 15 and 5 with a 1.68 ERA, and in 2023, he went 16 and 6 with a ridiculous 1.21 ERA. Again, even if a pitcher was putting up those numbers in the minors in the U.S., it would be considered something special. And there would be no doubt that player was poised to become a star in the majors. And when all was said and done, Yamamoto finished his NPB career after the 2023 season with a career ERA of 1.82. Now, for comparison's sake, Yu Darvish, who is arguably the most accomplished Japanese pitcher in the big leagues right now, had a 1.99 career ERA in the NPB. For what it's worth, Darvish had five seasons in Japan in which he pitched to an ERA under two, whereas Yamamoto only had four. And in his final MPB season, Darvish had a 1.44 ERA, far better than his next best season, where his ERA sat at 1.73. Of course, that means Yamamoto had two years in Japan in which his ERA was lower than anything Darvish ever produced. Plus, his final three seasons in Japan were all better than Darvish's second best campaign in his home country. And Darvish only won the Eiji Sawamura Award just once during his time in Japan. Masahiro Anaka and Kenta Maeda both managed to win it twice. 
but nobody in Japan has won the award three times, much less three years in a row, since the days of Masaichi Kaneda, who accomplished the feat in the 1950s. Of course, that was back in the days before Japanese stars made the leap to the big leagues. The bottom line here is that Yamamoto has surpassed the accomplishments of any other Japanese pitcher who has come to the majors. And considering the lineage of Japanese pitchers over the last few decades, that says a lot about Yamamoto. The next way that Yamamoto is different is his size. While MLB teams have grown to covet pitchers who are tall, strong, and physically imposing, Yamamoto doesn't fit that description at all. And in a way, that makes his unparalleled success in Japan even more impressive. Now, the Dodgers roster lists Yamamoto at 5 foot 10 inches and 176 pounds. So he's actually probably a little smaller than that. And even if the height and weight listed in the media guide is accurate, Yamamoto is a good few inches below the league average and honestly it looks more like a guy they pulled out of the crowd than a big league starting pitcher. Instead, he fits in with outliers like Pedro Martinez and Tim Lincecum, who are among the best of their generation. But there are not a lot of starting pitchers that size who have found long-term success in the big leagues. And if you just took a look at Yamamoto without knowing anything about him, you'd think there's no way he could possibly have elite stuff on the mound. But he does. Despite his small size, Yamamoto has a fastball that is capable of hitting the upper 90s. Likewise, his hard slider can reach the upper 80s and even low 90s, which just leaves hitters absolutely befuddled at how his pitches can be so fast and have so much movement at the same time. And for good measure, Yamamoto imitates fellow Japanese pitchers like Shohei Otani and Kodai Senga in throwing a split finger pitch that opposing hitters can't help but chase. It may not be the same as Senga's infamous ghost fork, but it gets the job done. And finally, there is Yamamoto's best pitch, his curveball, which happens to be the most responsible for Yamamoto's high level of success in Japan. Many have called it a right-handed version of the curveball thrown by his new teammate with the Dodgers, Clayton Kershaw. And a comparison like that is incredibly high praise. Think about Kershaw at the peak of his abilities with that curveball. Keep in mind he's a 10-time All-Star and a 3-time Cy Young winner, who also led the National League in strikeouts 3 times, won the Triple Crown, and even won MVP honors in 2014 off the back of that curveball, which has also put him on the precipice of 3,000 career strikeouts. If Yamamoto's curveball is anything near Kershaw's, and his split finger pitch is anywhere near as good as Senga's Ghost Fork, MLB hitters are going to have their hands full. It doesn't matter how tall he might be. Now, despite his great repertoire, Yamamoto isn't one to rest on his laurels. And for a player with amazing laurels, that might come as a surprise. But again, his pursuit of perfection is what makes him different. Between the 2022 and 2023 seasons, Yamamoto went to work to change his entire windup. Keep in mind that this was on the heels of posting a 1.68 ERA in the MPB. That would have made the best of us happy and probably a little complacent. But that wasn't the case with Yamamoto. He went to work on his delivery so that he could get more momentum moving toward the plate. Now, what does that tell us about Yamamoto? Well, for starters, it tells us that he's probably a perfectionist, but it also tells us that he knows who he is. He knows he's undersized and that he needs to maximize his momentum moving toward the plate. He also knows that he can't just overpower hitters, which is why he has such well-developed off-speed pitches too. And Yamamoto's self-awareness also shines through with his off-field regimen too. He doesn't waste his time trying to bulk up and add weight to his meager frame. You know, that might work for bigger pitchers, but not for Yamamoto. Instead, he works on his flexibility because he knows that's one of the biggest strengths. Away from the field, Yamamoto can be found doing yoga, performing headstands, and contorting his arms and legs in a variety of positions that most baseball players wouldn't even attempt. And he warms up by throwing mini soccer balls and mini javelins. Again, Yamamoto is not just an ordinary pitcher. You know, most likely it would never even occur to any other major league pitcher to prepare for a game with soccer balls and javelins or to ditch the weight room for a yoga mat. But whatever Yamamoto does, even if it's different from the norm, it's working for him. After all, he's already proven that he's capable of rising to the occasion. When a slew of MLB executives traveled to Japan to watch him pitch in September 2023, all he did was go out and throw a no-hitter. 
which of course was the second no-hitter of his career, Yamamoto has also risen to the occasion when pitching on the international stage too. He helped Japan to an Olympic gold medal during the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo, and then he did the same during the 2023 WBC. Now obviously, the showdown in the final at bat of the game between Shohei Otani and Mike Trout is what most fans remember about the 2023 WBC, but Yamamoto had a really important role in Japan's triumph as well. During group play, he struck out eight batters over four scoreless innings while allowing just one hit against Australia. He later pitched 3.1 innings in the semifinals, keeping the door open for Japan's 6-5 comeback victory that sent them to the title game. Now, after dominating the MPB in Japan and conquering both the Olympics and the World Baseball Classic, there is no question that Yamamoto is ready for the big leagues. Of course, there's still a bit of mystery surrounding Yamamoto until he actually starts throwing pitches in the MLB, and there is a ton of pressure on him and the highest of expectations because of this $325 million contract contract. But based on everything we know about him, it's clear that Yamamoto is no ordinary pitcher and no ordinary person. And that's exactly why he's poised to not just be a success in the big leagues, but dominate the same way he dominated in Japan. And I'll say it again, Yoshinobu Yamamoto isn't just another pitcher to come over from Japan. And if you think that, you're making a mistake. Yeah, he doesn't fit the mold of what we think a dominant starting pitcher should be, but being different is what makes him so special. It's why the Dodgers gave him that massive contract. That's also why nobody should be surprised when Yamamoto spends the next decade being one of the most dominant pitchers in the big leagues. All right, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know what you thought down in the comments. Don't forget to like and share, and we'll see you in the next one.